Diabetes and the SLP. What should SLPs know? Diabetes is the seventh leading cause of death in the United States, and currently over 10% of people in the US are diagnosed with diabetes. You might think that SLPs don't really need to know much about diabetes, but I'm here to tell you some really surprising facts in ways that we actually can help this population. I'm Teresa Richard. I've been a medical speech pathologist for 15 years. I'm a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders. I'm the founder and CEO of the MedSLP Collective and MedSLP Education. Number one, diabetes can impact swallowing. Diabetic neuropathy may cause slow gastric emptying, which is a movement disorder of the stomach and can cause a constant feeling of fullness, decrease hunger, and in extreme cases, result in regurgitation. Can cause hyperactivity of the cricopharyngeus muscle. This can result in a decreased ability to move the bolus from the pharyngeal stage through the PES on the esophagus, which can then be expectorated and or possibly aspirated. It can also cause decreased pharyngeal sensation. This can result in the patient not coughing or clearing appropriately to remove the bolus from the airway. It can result in frank aspiration or aspiration as residue builds up depending on the severity of the decreased sensation. Now, what is diabetic neuropathy? Nerve damage caused by chronic high blood glucose levels and high levels of fat or triglycerides. High blood sugar levels can also damage the small blood vessels that provide your nerves with oxygen and nutrients. Peripheral and autonomic neuropathy are common types of diabetic neuropathy. Peripheral meaning the long nerves, often affecting the feet, legs, hands, and arms. There's one long nerve that SLPs are often involved with, and that's the vagus nerve. Autonomic neuropathy is damage to the nerves that control your internal organs, which can impact your heart rate and digestive systems. For these reasons, someone with chronic diabetes and concerns for dysphagia or dysphagia-related decline should have an instrumental swallow study, especially if there's a higher risk for reduced pharyngeal or laryngeal sensation and esophageal or GI impairments. A colleague of mine recently got a consult because of concern for aspiration pneumonia. Her mentor told her that anytime she sees missing toes in patients with uncontrolled diabetes to consider their vagus nerve and their swallowing may be impacted. She recommended a modified barium swallow study and discovered the silent aspiration. Point number two, diabetes can affect cognition. Central nervous system is affected by diabetes as blood vessels that feed nerves become damaged. Studies have even found a stronger association between type two diabetes and dementia. Both type one and type two diabetes have also been associated with impairments in attention, processing speed, executive functioning, and verbal fluency. According to a 2016 study titled Diabetes and Cognitive Impairment, cognitive deficits may occur at the very earliest stages of diabetes and are further exacerbated by the metabolic syndrome. A colleague recently shared a story with me about a patient that she was seeing through home health. She said the patient explained that every time she had a hyperglycemic episode, she lost all short-term memory. She said she can't remember where her pills are or even how to cook herself something when this happens. The SLP is obviously working with her doctor to help manage her diabetes better, but they were able to work on some external memory aids to prevent it from happening in the first place. I'll be posting other videos just like this one that you won't wanna miss. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Also leave a comment below and tell me your experience with diabetes cases you've encountered. Number three, diabetes can impact voice. Remember when I said neuropathy? Well, it doesn't just impact swallowing, it can also impact voice. Chronic inflammatory polyneuropathy affects long nerves or nerves outside of the brain and spinal cord, including the recurrent laryngeal nerve. What does the recurrent laryngeal nerve innervate? All intrinsic muscles of the larynx, except for the cricothyroid muscle. This can lead to unilateral vocal fold paresis or paralysis. A case study in 1988 describes a patient with insulin dependent diabetes and temporary paralysis of the left recurrent laryngeal nerve, which causes vocal fold palsy. Symptoms included hoarseness, which resolved within eight weeks as his metabolic control improved. When we think about diabetes, we don't necessarily think about how it relates to speech therapy and swallowing in our adult clients. However, if we understand how diabetes affects our clients, then it becomes obvious. Poor blood flow, decreased healing, small capillary death, nerve degeneration are all part of the progression of diabetes. 
While we tend to think about how those issues impact the extremities, poor wound healing in the feet or lack of sensation in the fingers, we should also remember that the same processes can decrease sensation and neuromuscular response in the larynx, resulting in both voice and swallowing issues. In addition, these same processes can contribute to degenerative brain conditions and cognitive decline. We may not be the professionals directly addressing the diabetes, but we need to be aware that our clients with diabetes could very well be exhibiting increasing difficulties if their disease is not managed appropriately. It's important to consider that management of the metabolic syndrome associated with diabetes is an important step towards improvement. This can involve med management, exercise, and diet change. Speech therapy alone can't resolve these changes and impairments, but it's an important piece to the overall plan of care. Check out the free MedSLP Collective Clipboard Kit for access to editorial reviewed resources on other various conditions that we treat. To access that, head over to MedSLPCollective.com where we also have a robust and vibrant community of SLPs and mentors to help you out with your toughest clinical cases.